Hey, uh, hey everybody, welcome to the newest edition or welcome to the newest episode of e commerce unfiltered. We aspire to have amazing, maybe controversial, but really significant conversations. I and mean, we want to talk about all things e commerce, use cases, all the exciting things in e commerce. And uh, today we have a uh, Sadi of Velu, and it's a very interesting company, extremely interesting founder. And we have, uh, as un you know, Netcore Unboxed and Velu, we are now really looking forward to working with each other. But before we dive into all of that, uh, Sadi, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? You know, you know, and you know, just give a little background about how you got started with uh, Velu. What does it do exactly? And you know, a little background about yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. So, uh, uh, yeah, we've been doing uh, doing AI related work before before it became uh, became like this big. Uh, I actually co I come from a computer science background. Uh, I studied machine learning AI. Uh, my thesis was in uh, in machine learning AI. So I've been sort of uh, in this space for a long time. And then even prior to this, I was uh, in the e commerce space for about a decade. Have a bunch of partners in this space where I've been really focused on trying to optimize the customer experience for e-commerce retailers. Um, so prior to this, I was actually in the founding team of a company called Cake. Uh, we were mostly focused on restaurants and then connecting the customers with the restaurants. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, we, have a, we had about 2,400 restaurants in the, the, in the U.S. using our solution. So there are a lot of learnings from that that, uh, that we're bringing into Vadu. Okay. Uh, and then we were also acquired by Cisco Foods, which is the largest food distributor in the world. And there are a lot of learnings from there as well that we're bringing into what we do at Velu. Right. Um, so exactly what we do at Velu, uh, as an example, is that if you take any of the brands or retailers, uh, as you as you just mentioned, Pawan, like the e-commerce space is like changing very, very rapidly, right? So we have like AI-based solutions uh, that that are optimizing that customer experience. Mm -hmm. But one of the challenges is that the foundation and layer relating to the data to support this AI solutions is actually currently not built built out. And uh, so our focus is just really uh, getting this data ready in a manner that any of the downstream functions, say whether it's on-site search or SEO or, you know, think of like AI SEO uh, recommendations have had, like all of those solutions can be optimized in a manner uh, with the data that, that you can actually use uh, for these AI solutions. So that's really like our main focus. Uh, and that's what we've been focused on uh, on get to break. Right. Okay. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I actually really understand. I, I can relate to how you've been approaching the data part. We When we got started with search, okay, let me take a step back. We had three big issues. I mean, if I have to really simplify it, one is data is really a big problem how people even generate and store data, understanding what people are searching for using AI is a big problem, and also personalizing the results is a hard problem to solve. Yeah. I think from what you're saying, you guys are coming in and saying, not only do you want to solve good quality data, but build a solid foundational layer to have data as a concept and use AI to really generate super accurate product catalog information which can be used in a variety of ways including search yeah yeah exactly i can so we initially when i was like looking at this problem so i'm i'm a person who's very particular when i'm searching for something and mm -hmm. what i realized is that like when you go to any of the sites and then you look for a product it's just really you know the results were not very good right so you see a lot of like incorrect results the right results are there then you cannot find them and then you know that you just saw it like in a few days ago, but you tried to find it again and it's not available, right? Right. And so what we realize is that it's actually, of course, two parts to this problem, right? One is the customer experience and then the, the search solution that is being used. Uh, and then typically, you know, where like the platform level solutions that are there are not very good. And then this is where like unbox type of solution actually is, is very helpful for these retailers. Um, and then the other side of it is the... Uh, the product catalog itself, right? If you don't have the the data in a manner in the product catalog to support the search function or the retailer, where customers are referring to the same product in a thousand different ways. So how do you actually now 
manage the uh, understand the context of the what the customer is saying to show the product the right products is the problem that we are we are solving. So what we realized that if you go to like most brands and retailers, it's a struggle that they have uh, in terms of having all of the product data in a manner. And then as you can imagine, like they they most of the times like they don't actually have an understanding of how customers are searching for products and then how you know how organic traffic is coming to the site to go and do these optimizations, right? Because it's someone in the merchandising team that's doing this work. And so it's it's a very difficult task to go and automate this end to end where you have this all different ways of customers are searching for products to be somehow enriched in the catalog so that you can show the right products and the right customer. So what we are really focused on this one piece of the puzzle where we enrich the product catalog in a manner that you can actually now uh, work with the you know, unbox type of solution where you can actually optimize it into end customer experience. Right. I think one of the big challenges for anything e-commerce is, is it really going to work? What's, where's the proof in the pudding? You know, this, this I'm sure you've seen, they've been asked, about this before. So in our case, it was, hey, why don't you A-B test? Why don't you test it and see? Let the metrics move. Um, and it, 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 it is what it is. It We've been able to produce you know, millions of dollars of incremental revenue with a better search algorithm. Yeah. And inherently, it makes it a better search experience and a customer experience for people who are shopping and eventually they buy more stuff and then Therefore, a better search means more conversions and more revenue. Is that something similar with uh, Valu as well? Yeah, exactly. I think the way we think about it is that we uh, we also do A-B tests. And, and the thing is that we are able to do it in a manner that where you can capture the long tail, right? So this is where like you have uh, a lot of high-intent customers where they're using like, you know, two, three, four, five uh, key, uh, you know, keywords that they're using to look for a product. And then what we are able to do is just to capture that information and then enrich it in a, in a manner and then you can do a side-by-side A-B test. So we typically also work with, uh, uh, you know, we work with brands and retailers where we can do an A-B test where uh, by having the enriched product data, hey, this is like, these are the products that the customer must be able to find that they couldn't find before. Right. And then as a result of that, we can actually show that incremental revenue that we can bring to the table. Right. And so. So one of the things that came up in, even in the last episode when we were talking to Forrest yeah. was uh, e-commerce platforms seem to be, I would say, not necessarily innovating. But I, w- I, I, I wouldn't want to say that. I think maybe that's not the place to look for cutting-edge innovation from a business use case perspective because they probably, I don't know if they can go deep or not. I mean, I'm sure you've got opinions. I'll give you a shocking stat since we both work on search in one sense. 85, maybe 85%, I think, or 84% of all e-commerce companies are still using an e-commerce platform default search system. Yeah, they are. But how mind-blowing is that? Like, why aren't, so why aren't there, why isn't there so much more innovation in this space? What do you think, why do you think this is a scenario? Yeah, I think I think we looked at it from uh, uh, from the angle for for what we do. Uh, how we looked at it is that if you look at any of the e-commerce platforms, you know they are generic solutions, right? Generic platforms, so they make make the platform available for you so that you can actually build other things on top of that. And at the end of the day, like a lot of the platforms, they will never build a, a solution specific for a, you know fashion vertical or home goods or, or jewelry, right? This is where like the, the domain-specific knowledge that we bring to the table is think of it as a layer on top of this platform so that you can actually now understand what the fashion items are, what the jewelry items are. That helps to then like take that uh, platform level uh, understanding to the next level. And then that's where, uh, you know, working with, uh, you know, with Unbox as an example, where you see that uh, availability of domain-specific knowledge like now help to even um, uh, improve the understanding of these products, uh, you know, for the search solution. Mm. And, and, and mm. you know, I have a question there for, for you, Pawan, like, how did you, you know, when you were looking at, you know, problems solved, like, how did you think about this search being a problem to solve? Because, I mean, like how you just said, like, it's, uh, you know, 85% of the retailers are not used. I mean, they're just using the platform solution, right? And uh, so how did you think about that? 
No, this is a big problem. In fact, I think this number was much higher when we got started. Uh, I'm probably close to 100%. See, at the time when we got started, e-com platforms were the in-depth solution. They were the in-depth solution for front-end customer experience. They were the in-depth solution for shopping cart, in-depth solution for database uh, search. But as we've grown, like, everything has got compartmentalized, mo- you know, literally become modular. So everybody is sort of good at one, one thing and you want to go find best-in-class solutions out there. That's where we come in. Having said that, I feel yeah, business solution, having a business impact, I don't think e-commerce platforms are the place to go. They are effectively commoditized. It's over. I think the best e-com platform is the best clue to putting a lot of other things together. And I think we do a pretty good job and demonstrating that value. The market is massive. Opportunity is massive. And that's how we've been approaching. And I think uh, from what you are also experiencing in the market, I think this sort of validates that, that going deep into a solution and solving for it. Because folks like Amazon and Google have done this. Uh, it's not new. And, you know, in, in many ways. Yeah. I think, yeah, this, uh, you know, you can have this generic solution that can get you going initially, uh, but really like to see the, the, the true results and then you can go to the optimal level. You need to have like specialized solutions like working together like this. So that's why, you know, super excited, you know, with the, with the work that we are doing at Unbounced. Right, right. Absolutely. And I think you're just scratching like the, like I would say the surface of what AI capabilities offer. What do you think? How is Gen AI, AI? I mean, we are now living in, I would say, a buzzword universe. Everything is a buzzword. I don't think I can get a single sentence out without a buzzword. Gen AI, AI, this, that, you know, whatever. So what do you think? What is Gen AI? How is it truly impacting commerce? Are you seeing that? What's your sense? I think from what we have seen, I think from my point of view, what we have seen is that the first generation of these solutions that they were more creative focus, right? So creating images, creating ads, for example, creating some copy. And I think that there, you know, there are some like, you know, successful solutions and I think that adds value. Uh, I think the next generation of solutions that are coming out in the in the last six months to to now, I think twenty twenty five, it's just more focused on optimizing the workflows relating to these brands and retailers. So think of like the merchandising team, like, you know, where you, you know, they have a ton of work most of the time and then they cannot keep up with the work. So how can you now have AI workflows built in a manner like with these AI agents or like some sort of workflows? Yeah, so uh, we're living in a universe of buzzwords, uh, AI, Gen AI, I don't know, whatnot. Um, I think how much is fluff? What is marketing? Is this all jargon? Is this for real? Like, look, uh, ChatGPT, I mean, is for real. Yeah. Like, I think the question here is, in e-commerce, is there a true business impact already? Uh, I We certainly have opinions about it. Like, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think from what I have seen, uh, the first generation of solutions in uh, using Gen AI, uh, they did a pretty good job of uh, creating copy and then creating images that can be used by brands and retailers. Um, I think the next generation that's coming up in the last six months to, to, to now it's just more around like optimizing these workflows, right? So this is where the agents come into play, uh, where you look at a, a specific workflow relating to, let's just say, a merchandising person or a, a, a marketing uh, optimization related functionality. How can you do that with the help of AI, uh, where you were doing all of this work manually before? And I see that that's being like the sort of the latest wave of uh, uh, solutions that are coming coming in. And, um, you know, there's even innovation that's happening every, every single week, every single month where uh, a lot of things are changing. And so uh, I see that, uh, especially the latest solutions that are being, you know, that are coming out, they're just more, mostly focused on these workflows. And then I think, I think that they are real and then and, uh, it's just about, you know, finding the right solution and then making sure that it applies to your use case and then for, for how you operate. Uh, it's, it's just a way to think about it. Yeah. I think our, if you, from our perspective, from an unboxed perspective, using AI for performance is real. And we've been doing that for years. It's making sure we are crunching the right data, essentially making sure we're de- demonstrating that kind of performance. Yeah. 
I think, but like you said, AI is used for, you know, I would say productivity gains, making things much more efficient. And mm. my sense is, I think where it could move forward is having a big impact on customer experience, where an, a, perhaps a real user experience can be born to like a significant pillar of AI which I don't think is there yet. I don't think there's a workable solution yet, but I think, which is a good segue <laughs> to go. My, our personal uh, opinion, like uh, if I were to put a prediction for 25, yeah. 2025, is I think we'll see the first semblance of, uh, I will, like, you know, AI-based user experiences. Maybe it might come not in Amazon, maybe elsewhere. And there is, for the first time, there is insane innovation uh, outside of capital-intensive companies like Amazon. And I think we might see something absolutely amazing emerge. It could be voice, could be conversational, it could be something within AI. And I think that would be our prediction to say, hey, look out for that. It is the first instance of a true product market fit on user experience uh, on AI is, is coming our way. What, what, are you, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. I think uh, what you mentioned about the customer experience side, I think there is a lot of opportunity for innovation there at this moment. Uh, and, and that's why I think like how you mentioned, like we're just scratching the surface at this stage, right? Mm -hmm. right. So uh, for us, Valu, like our point is just about, hey, how can you make sure that the data infrastructure, the product data infrastructure, the catalog infrastructure is available for, for that type of experience to exist. And so what we are doing is, is just supporting, uh, supporting, you know, from that angle. Um, and then I know what, what you are thinking from an unboxed uh, point of view, which is uh, more around that, hey, how can you bring that next generation customer experience? And then, you know, how can you have like true AI working in the background? Right, right. You know, I think, and, and it can be, it, I think it can be a leap from where we are to that in the form of co-pilots, mer marketers, merchandisers can use a bunch of agentic uh, systems, especially powered by AI, to help them get there and eventually have a particular, I would say, use case where even the visitors, shoppers, are experiencing a brand new user experience, which is essentially powered by AI, top to bottom. Right now, we are powering AI in the back end, like, which is driving a lot of performance. But I think it will show up in the in the front end as well. And I think it's an exciting time. Okay, yeah, it has. Yeah. Right. So you see what you're going to be thinking about right. that space. Uh, and then what you... Oh, uh, uh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. We have so many ideas. I think the best thing about this, I would say, era is we can experiment so quickly and so fast. So much. I think we can run 10x more experiments on use cases, features, than ever before and so it's a it's a it's a very exciting time I was like, yeah absolutely i think on the development side as well like things are moving very very fast so you know whatever it took like some amount of time to build before like now you can actually build much faster and then that also helps with this experimentation that we're working in the future brands so, right absolutely okay cool. all right thanks sadi thanks for you know giving or uh, shedding some light on all of the things you've been doing we have Charted a, an amazing course of collaboration, innovation, and helping out our customers. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, we, all our teams are looking forward to working with each other. Yeah, thanks again for, for having me. And uh, yeah, super excited to work with, uh, with your team. Uh, I know we've already made some progress in, uh, in, in having our solutions working together to, to add value to, to our customers. So Really excited to see, uh, you know, what we've already done and then what we have in, in the future. Right. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Cool.